Oi, this place is a mess. Everyone loves to take the office cleaners for granted, but that's okay. In addition to the moderate wages, I get the best entertainment ever. See this guy over here? This is Edward. The, you know the human version of a headache? Yep, that's him. Oh, hello, Maria. What are you up to? Oh, nothing. Just business as usual. Anything I can help you with? You look stressed. It's these stupid, stupid people. So inefficient and lazy. Gotta watch them like babies in a crib. Never thought I'd get paid 70k a year to run a daycare. <sighs> you take care, okay? Yes, sir. You too. See, I get the inside scoop. My mama always told me to smile and be polite and I'd be rewarded. Edward is a fuddy-duddy. You know... A theory ex-manager, if you know what I'm saying. But I know my way around cold hearts like his. Somewhere down below there is a fire of life. Ah, yes. The main employee workroom. Love to see them all busy at work. The more they work here, the less I have to clean elsewhere. Hey, Maria. Hey, Jack. Jack has had an interesting past. But his perspectives are useful here at the office. See, they think I'm just a maid, but they don't know how much I pay attention. Well, I hear some tears again. Hey, Alex, what are you doing back here? I don't want to talk about it. Again? Yep, see you later. I got lots of paperwork to look at. Peter, what are you doing in the back of the warehouse crying? <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm just stressed. Peter, it's okay. You know you can talk to me. I just can't keep doing this. Dan is off partying and leaves me in charge. Edward is mean and I can't keep covering for everyone. And Alex always ends up telling me to be more assertive. I don't know how much longer we can hold this place together. Ah, yes. Dan the owner. Don't expect to see him ever. He's probably in the Bahamas with that new mama of his. And I don't mean stepmother either, if you know what I'm saying. Well, Peter, you can always look to promote the lower guys. Some are promising. That brings me to my favorite, who seems to always take his coffee break right about now. Hey, Maria. Good to see you. You too. What's up? You know, the usual work day. Gotta get back to it. What a nice guy. He's got the basics to be a good manager. If only he just honed some of those skills. Not to brag or anything, but I do have a pretty good ear for things around here. I've seen many managers, and I bet I can help him get that promotion after they give someone the boot. Now I just gotta find out who it is that's leaving. Will these guys have what it takes to pull it together and get this company back on its feet? You'll have to wait and see on the new series, Steve's Art of Management. The general concept. Steve's Art of Management. The TV show is about the business organization that is in disarray and a complete mess. The organization personifies mismanagement. This is evident from greater employee dissatisfaction and employee turnover. Ineffective leaders and managers can pose a huge threat to the long-run sustainability of the organization. The TV show reflects the journey of an organization from being on the verge of failure to the perfect example of an organization that works like a family. Internal conflicts and the resulting stress are threatening the growth of the organization. The owner appears to be unaware of the mess and is always away on a holiday. Managers in different departments are left to sort out the issues themselves. The lack of organization, role conflicts, and resistance to change are some of the factors leading to mismanagement. 
Some of the common comments that can be heard being made by employees include, Huh, Edward is a dictator. I will quit this company as soon as I can find another job. This organization is still stuck in the past. Nothing good can ever happen to this company. It is evident that the organization needs to change. It needs to adopt more employee-friendly policies and allow employees to have a greater say in the functioning of the organization. This organization needs to move forward by allowing employees to work in teams for achieving different object objectives. Employee empowerment is the way to go. Dictatorship is a thing of the past. Seriously, who wants another Hitler to be in charge? Not us. Effective management needs to ensure that employees are happy and satisfied. After all, employees are the biggest asset for any organization. The boss, Dan, needs to be actively involved to clear the mess and provide a new beginning to the organization. Some organizational restructuring, diversity training, formation of teams, and the application of personality job fit theory will do the trick for the organization. The change will lead to higher productivity, greater employee satisfaction, lower stress, higher morale, and increase everything all around. The target market for this TV show consists of all professionals and students who are either working or looking to join the corporate sector. In fact, the management lessons will do a world of good to every professional in bringing about the desired change in himself or herself as well as for the organization he or she works for. These professionals will be able to relate to many of the happenings shown in the episodes and will be interested in knowing how things can change for the better. Episode one, the art of management, planning and strategic management, organizational structure and design and managing diverse human resources. Topics addressed will be the importance a business's environment plays into determining its structure and the processes behind proper decision making so as to avoid hasty and ineffective choices. Steve is just starting to learn the ropes, and he has this part down, so he thinks. What will his misconceptions about his new position teach him about leadership? Edward's management style boils down to him pushing only for his preferences while ignoring feedback from both his employees and the clear evidence that his choices aren't completely effective. Steve's orientation to the office reveals to him that company structure is strictly mechanistic for the sole reason that Edward wants to remain the only person with decisional power. Steve confronts Edward with what he learned and suggests reanalyzing the company's environment to ensure the company has the best structure. Angered, Edward explains that he doesn't have to analyze a thing for his decisions and that Edward assures that him that he always makes the best choice right away and doesn't need people second-guessing him. In the end, Edward realizes his fault and accepts that the best choices for anything isn't always immediately available. Episode 2, Organizational Change, Development, and Innovation. The topics addressed are the importance for managers to be agents of change and ways to stimulate innovation around the office. Steve's presence in the office has provided a fresh perspective on the workings of the company. Steve has begun questioning a few of the organization's methods and wonders if there may be a better way to go about things. His co-workers warn that Edward likes and ensures that things will get done his way. Undiscouraged, Steve seeks out to reach Edward and see as to why he shies away from change. In the end, Edward is reminded that a manager must be an agent of change rather than to fight it. Episode 3 Individual behavior, values and attributes, and communication and negotiation. Topics addressed. How job performance relies on employees' attitude and the importance of facilitating effective communication among employees and externally. Tired of the low company morale, Steve seeks to improve on the mood of his co-workers and himself by exploring just how to reach people and make everyone's work experience better. Steve has to learn the softer side of management now that he has the easy part down. Thankfully, Jack and even Maria can lend a hand or ear as needed. Episode four, groups and teams. Topics addressed, how proper understanding of a group's behavior can lead effective teamwork. In an effort to boost office camaraderie and to see Steve's management know-how, 
Edward forms a new project committee with Steve spearheading the group. Also in the committee is Dan and Jack, who are often at odds because of Dan's lackadaisical mindset. In the end, Steve learns that it is better to channel people's distinct personalities towards objectives rather than to force change in people. Episode 5. Motivation, Leadership, and Trust. Topics addressed. What factors influence one's motivation and what it takes to be the best leader one could be? Steve has finally come into his own, despite setbacks. Just when he feels secure, something that no one expects happens. The promotion that Steve had believed was strictly his is now an open position for all. Suddenly, the office is in a scramble to prove themselves to be the best for the job. However, in the end, the office learns that the best leader is the one who works with the company's employees and goals rather than for their own good. And now a special note from the team. We will continue to use a PowerPoint storyboard platform to create our show. Each week we collaborate, then divide and conquer our tasks. Be sure to catch us when the official show airs.